the objective news network? Government shutdowns have become the weapon of choice for settling partisan political battles. This is John Nasho reporting for the Objective News Network. As this story is being broadcast, the U.S. House of Representatives has just passed a bill to forestall what would be the 15th time in U.S. history that the nation has faced the possibility of a government shutdown. The first government shutdown occurred under President Ronald Reagan on November 20, 1981, followed by another seven successive shutdowns in the 1980s under President Reagan's administration. President Reagan and the Congress were the first to use government shutdowns as a weapon to settle their political differences. In 1990, under the presidential administration of George H.W. Bush, there was another shutdown that lasted three days, resulting from Congress's failure to include a plan to reduce the deficit as the president had insisted. In November and December 1995, there were two additional shutdowns, this time lasting a total of 26 days over Bill Clinton's dispute with congressional Republicans and Newt Gingrich's pledge to balance the budget and repeal President Clinton's 1993 tax increases. The 12th government shutdown took place on September 30, 2013, under the presidential administration of Barack Obama over the Affordable Care Act and a push by Republicans to dismantle key parts of President Obama's signature health care law. This shutdown lasted 16 days. Two years later, in 2018, the government was again shut down two times under the presidential administration of Donald Trump. The first shutdown lasted only two days as part of a political fight over immigration. The second lasted much longer, 34 days, and centered around President Trump's demand for $5.7 billion to pay for the construction of a wall along the U.S.-Mexico border. This time around, the political battle stems from Democrat lawmakers and President Biden's demands for $6 billion in funding to aid Ukraine in their war against Russia. The history of government shutdowns raises two big questions. First, why did it take until 1981 to use the threat of a government shutdown as a bludgeon to settle political disputes? And do threats of government shutdowns represent appropriate behavior by both presidents of the United States and the Congress? Let's take a second to think about it. Maybe the first thing to consider is that government shutdowns are really nothing of the sort. What are called essential services continue on, things like Social Security, Medicare, and Medicaid, and yes, even the salaries of government workers and the military get paid just like they were at work after any shutdown is over. Preparation for and actual shutdowns cost every American taxpayer, regardless of your political affiliation as a Democrat and Independent or Republican, a lot of money. In the end, the real question may boil down to this. When you, as a political leader, regardless of your political persuasion, are supposed to be responsibly running an entire country, representing all of its citizens, in this case a republic, why should you allow those with differing political views to duke it out 
at the expense of the people you are supposed to be serving in the first place. A fair question to ask in all of this is why the entire phenomena of government shutdowns is such a relatively new happenstance in our entire history. Maybe it's because our earlier political leaders thought it wise and better to act responsibly, to plan in advance and engage in civil discourse and act, not for their own short-term political leverage or gain or to settle political scores, but rather to act in the long-term interest of the people they are supposed to serve, irrespective of any political branding. This is John Nation reporting for the Objective News Network. Thank you all for watching, and please tell your friends, your colleagues, and any followers you have to watch and subscribe. At ONN, we are dedicated to you and telling you the truth. Thank you.